It's always great to step back once in a while. We're so spoiled by all the high tech surrounding us, so it's just great to see how little we really need in terms of features and bling bling and still can get truly great results. So today let's celebrate simplicity. I so much love doing just that and I hope you'll understand a little bit why after having watched this video. Hey Tucker, hey, hey, look hey. what I bought. What? What's that? I bought a brand new professional SLR camera. Wow. This is a Christmas present for a young aspiring photographer. Oh cool. Yeah, look what I got. It's from it's from Pentacon. Okay. And it's the EXA. It's a brand new camera. What takes that? And now I have to try it out to see if it's really good. Yeah. Cool. Let's find out then. <laughs> so let's have a go. Okay. This is the famous Annemann Tower. And this is the EXA 1C. And I've got all the paperwork with it. Let's see what we have. This is a list of all the service stations in Eastern Germany when your camera has a problem. This is for a flash. And this is, this is the receipt. Camera was bought in 18th December 1986, new. And the camera, including the 1.8 lens and a camera bag was 380 Eastern Mark. And then he bought a lot of other stuff with it. And this is original. Operating manual. And it was sold by. It was sold in Eastern Berlin. It says here on this stamp. And the back was 30 marks and the camera 350. It wasn't expensive. XR1C. Okay, you open this thing at the bottom. Take off this. Click. It's all pretty straightforward, like in any other camera. Zit. Now we do two blank exposures. And... Okay, finished. Now we can shoot. The EXA goes back in a direct line to the famous Kine Exacta from 1936. Um, as you might know or not know, the Kine Exacta was the very first 35mm SLR camera ever that was mass produced. Fast forward to 1951, after the Second World War, people were struggling a lot and all these expensive cameras that were finished after the war, the Exacta cameras and others, uh, they were meant for export to bring uh, foreign currency back to Eastern Germany. So the IHG, the factory of the Exacta, was to come up with a cheaper version of that camera and that was the EXA. This was <laughs> born in 1951 and then it stood in production basically unchanged until 1987 only the cosmetics were changed so this is the last makeover in fancy black plastic finish from the 1980s but the internals are the same as in 1951 
keep in mind that before you start shooting you set the film counter to 36 or 24 depending on the film and then it will count backwards so it shows you how many exposures are left This camera is equipped with a waist level finder, that means you are directly looking onto the focusing screen and left and right are interchanged. For critical focusing you also have a small loop that you can fold into the light path. If the motive is far away you just set the lens to infinity, you don't need the loop. Yeah, okay, in 1986, when this camera was sold new, it was already what we call in Germany an Oldtimer vom Fließband, a classic fresh from the assembly line, a pretty dated design. And uh, but still, it's got it's 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 very interesting to see all the peculiar stuff that's going on here. For example, it's sort of like it's a left-handed camera. You would you would hold it like this, and also a bit like a medium format camera from from below, you know. And then here is the shutter release. And the reason for that is that the original, the big version, the Exacta, also was a left-handed design. The feature set, as you can imagine, is pretty basic, but also shows a lot of uh, peculiar characteristics of the 1930s. For example, we've got the waist level finder, of course. This is a somewhat updated, simplified version with a lot of plastic going on. Uh, but the viewfinder is interchangeable, which sort of was a real pro feature in the 60s or 70s, but it was standard in the 30s or 40s, maybe. Um, we've got this left-handed uh, shutter, as I told before. And then you've got this funny thing here, this lever, it locks the shutter. So if you pull this to the left, you cannot trigger the shutter. Not really sure what that's uh, good for. We've got exposure times from 1 30th of a second to 175th of a second. That's because of the very basic shutter mechanism. No long times and also no really short times. Uh, and of course B for long time exposures. Then we've got this uh, film counter. And I think that's it. This button here is to rewind the film to, you know, unlock the spool tripod socket and that's it oh and a flash synchronization yeah and when you put the red dot or whatever the colored dot on flash that's the flash sync but uh, yeah it's like 60th of a second which that is actually pretty good and this is the venerable m42 mount only these last versions of the EXA have the M42 mount. All the older ones had the EXACTA bayonet, but the EXACTA was uh, killed in like 70. There were some cameras made with the EXACTA bayonet until 74. And after that, uh, the M42 mount was the de facto standard in Eastern Germany. So they switched this camera to the M42 mount. And also note, they added this auto aperture feature here. You see this U-shaped lever that moves when you press the button and it presses this small pin that's auto aperture so what always happens uh, at least to me is i pick it up like this and I start to focus with the left hand as with any other camera and then I'm like, oh, this is a camera for left hand people really. So pick it up with the right hand, focus with the right hand and then trigger the shutter button with the left hand. You really have to get used to that. Another thing is, um, it's a basic camera. Most of the stuff that's basic doesn't really matter if you want to take good photos. What is limiting is the shutter because the fast shutter speed is 1 75th of a second. In this weather, remember the sunny 16 rule. You're shooting an ISO 100 film, for example, and that tells you a hundred, uh, a hundredth of a second at f16. Now I've got a yellow filter, so maybe f11 is good, or if you have a little bit overcast weather, it will be f8 or something. And then you can only go to 175th of a second. So 
the, the, the biggest aperture that you are going to use in these circumstances is maybe 5.6. So this camera was clearly not developed with uh, shallow depth of field in mind or anything of this modern stuff. It was more, you adjusted the aperture according to the light, not according to uh, any photographic uh, design reasons or anything like that. One thing why I love waist level finders is it's easy to take, you know, shots low on the ground, like what you do today with a with an iPhone or something, or with a camera with a flip screen. This really gives you the same sort of control. And that's what I like. As you might guess, taking portrait shots with a waist level finder is a nightmare. The building you see behind me, that's called the Bastille, and its expressionistic architecture was made by the famous Cologne architect Ripan, and this building was uh, opened in 1924, 12 years before the first Exacta was made even earlier. I really hope that I'm guessing the exposure right. Uh, I'm using the Sunny 16 rule. Uh, this thing, of course, doesn't have a light meter. So to rewind, press, flip open this, and rewind. Ay, ay, ay. That's it. And there's your film. Now comes the funny, peculiar thing that I didn't show you before. The shutter of this camera. It doesn't have a shutter, as you can see. There's no shutter. The reason is that there's a very basic mechanism and uh, the flip mirror is part of the shutter. So you see the mirror is down and from the back it serves as the first shutter curtain. And when you fire the shutter, Only the mirror opens and then there is like a flap that comes up to close the shutter. And now you see from the front there is like a curved flap. And that's the whole shutter mechanism. This was super easy to make. It's absolutely unique, only made ever in the EXA. Oh, that's also something you have to remember. This camera does not have yet the instant return mirror. That means when you take a shot, the mirror comes up but it doesn't go down after the exposure. But that's... In 1951 that was standard. The instant return mirror was invented, I think, in 54. And also keep in mind that Hasselblad cameras never had an instant return mirror, not even in the 90s. So all in all, I, I have to say I really like this camera. It's just a super charming little thing. It, it, it looks kind of cute, you know, but it's, it's more capable than you would think. The only real problem is the shutter, the 1 75th of a second, I find it pretty limiting. If you look back in times, uh, if you look into the early 1950s, it was pretty common back then. Many, many cameras back then still had leaf shutters and they also would do like a 200th of a second or something like that as the fastest time. So this camera wasn't that bad when it came out. In 1986, the real reason why they were still sold was they were always available. So if you wanted a Praktika or something else in Eastern Germany, keep in mind 
80% of the practicas were exported. So if you wanted one in Eastern Germany, you maybe had to pre-order or wait. You were in a waiting list or something like that. Whereas you would walk into any decent camera store and could just pick up an Exa and walk home. And also they were cheap and they just get the job done. If you're into photography, this thing can take as good pictures as anything else. And that's why I also like it a lot today. And last not least, these cameras almost never fail because of that simple mechanisms. There is not a lot can, that can go wrong. That's also a good thing. That's it for today. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you did so, then please leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. If you've got any questions or comments, write something in the comment section below. I always love to read all your comments. And also don't forget to hit the small bell button so you get a notification when I upload my next video. That's it for today. As I said, thanks and goodbye.